Um, sir, it's good to have you with us. Moscow has accused NATO of threatening Russia's, and I quote, security and national interest by officially welcoming Finland into the fold. The Kremlin spokesperson said the move will force Moscow to, and again, I quote here, take countermeasures to ensure our own security, both tactically and strategically. So I'll put tonight's question to you. How do you expect... Moscow to respond? Well, what we have seen uh, is that uh, uh, Moscow, President Putin, has tried to deny, uh, deny sovereign independent nations in Europe to make their own choices, to choose their own path. That was actually the declared purpose of the invasion of Ukraine, was to uh, prevent Ukraine from becoming uh, a member, but also uh, it was a declared uh, policy from uh, President Putin that he wanted Finland and Sweden uh, to uh, never become uh, members of NATO, to close NATO's door. Uh, he's getting ex the exact opposite. He's getting more NATO in the eastern part of the alliance, and he's getting more NATO members, uh, Finland and, uh, and Sweden. And that's the way uh, free democratic nations are reacting when an authoritarian power like right. Russia tries to control what neighbours can do and try to re-establish a sphere of influence. In the past hour or so, Vladimir Putin has said, and I quote him here, the European Union has initiated a geopolitical confrontation with Russia. Your response? This is not a confrontation, neither from the EU nor from uh, uh, NATO. Uh, NATO is a defensive alliance. Uh, NATO and Finland uh, has never been and will never be a, a threat to Russia. It is Russia that has invaded neighbours, Georgia in 2008, uh, uh, Ukraine, Crimea in 2014, and then a full-fledged invasion uh, last uh, year. And that's the reason why countries in Europe, like Finland and Sweden, decide that they want to be part of NATO. And, uh, and uh, um, Finland joining uh, NATO means that uh, uh, Finland is getting safer and NATO is getting stronger. And we demonstrate that NATO's door is open. It's not for Russia to decide who can be a NATO member. It's for uh, independent democratic nations to decide. Sweden also looking for membership. The Turkish foreign minister was present at the ceremony yesterday. In fact, he was standing right behind you as you welcomed Finland into the club. You have urged Turkey and Hungary to uh, let Sweden join, and I quote you, without delay. Canada's foreign minister also uh, with you in Brussels last hour telling me she is confident in your leadership to get this done. Are you confident that you will get this done? I'm confident that uh, Sweden will become a member, uh, not least because uh, all NATO allies, also Turkey, uh, invited uh, Sweden to become a member at our uh, summit last year in uh, Madrid. And Sweden also fulfills mm. the uh, criteria, the demands that, uh, that, uh, that was agreed uh, uh, in, uh, in connection with the Madrid summit, uh, the trilateral agreement between Finland, Sweden and, uh, and uh, Turkey. Um, and then, of course, I also strongly believe that um, uh, Turkey has some legitimate security concerns. Uh, no other ally has uh, mm. suffered more uh, terrorist attacks than Turkey. And the purpose of the dialogue we now have going on in NATO is how to ensure that those security threats uh, are uh, uh, threats are addressed in a proper way. You said recently that the failure to incorporate Sweden uh, at the same time as Finland, something you have spent considerable time on, was not a personal setback. You clearly believe that Sweden will still get membership, but do you still genuinely believe that this is not a personal setback at this point? I generally believe that uh, also Sweden will become a member, um, and I've stated uh, mm. clearly that the uh, the most important thing is not that Finland and Sweden join the alliance exactly at the same time. Mm. The most important thing is that uh, also Sweden uh, become uh, becomes a member in the near uh, future, uh, and uh, we need to understand that this is so far the quickest accession process in NATO's modern history. Mm. Finland and Sweden applied in May last year. Already in June, uh, all allies invited them to become members. And, and already now, uh, 
less than a year after Finland is a member, and we are working hard to then also get Sweden uh, uh, as a full member uh, uh, in the near uh, future. We also have to understand that Sweden is in a much better and much safer position now than before they applied. Because as soon as all allies invited them, they got the status as an invitee, mm. meaning that they are now integrating into NATO's military and civilian structures, participating in NATO uh, military and civilian activities. And allies have uh, provided uh, bilateral security assurances. And also with Finland in, uh, Sweden becomes even uh, safer. Uh, and it's absolutely inconceivable that there will be any mm -hmm. military threat or uh, attack against uh, Sweden without NATO uh, reacting. So they are in a better place uh, while we are working for the full-fledged membership also for Sweden. The Ukrainian foreign minister has uh, welcomed Finland's accession to NATO and the speed at which this has happened. He said the best way to guarantee security in Europe, which is what this is all about at the end of the day, was to have Ukraine inside the alliance. Do you agree? And if so, when? So NATO's position is that Ukraine will become a, a member of the uh, alliance. Our uh, immediate task, our main focus now is, of course, to uh, provide support to Ukraine, to ensure that Ukraine prevails mm. as a sovereign, independent nation in in Europe, which is a precondition for any meaningful discussion about uh, membership. Uh, and, and, and thirdly, we're also now uh, starting to work on a more long-term uh, program where we can help uh, Ukraine uh, mm. move from Soviet-era doctrines, standards, equipment to uh, NATO uh, standards, uh, and also to s uh, increase their interoperability uh, with NATO uh, forces. We have not made any decisions mm. on uh, on when uh, a membership can uh, be decided. But in the meantime, we need to ensure that Ukraine prevails and that we are uh, helping Ukraine to move uh, towards Euro-Atlantic mm. integration. Well, Hungary's foreign minister says that inviting Ukraine even to NATO meetings undermines the principle of the alliance's unity. What's your response to that? Well, I think it's important to meet with Ukraine also in the uh, uh, well-established forum, the NATO-Ukraine uh, Commission, as we did yesterday with Foreign Minister uh, Koleba, uh, to discuss how to sustain the unprecedented support uh, NATO and NATO allies are providing to uh, Ukraine, um, uh, but also to discuss reforms, but also to raise issues related to minority uh, rights. Mm. Uh, so I think it is a good thing to have a platform where we can have dialogue and also uh, address uh, a wide range of issues which are important for Europe, for NATO allies and for Ukraine. Short term, long term for Ukraine here. Short term, it is desperate for more ammunition. It is absolutely clear that Europe cannot manufacture that ammunition quickly enough. What are you going to do about that? Well, we are ramping up production. We saw all the day last fall that uh, this has now become a war mm. of attrition, which is a war of logistics. So we are working closely with the defense industry across the alliance to ramp up uh, production, uh, partly to be able to replenish our own stocks, but also, of course, to be able to continue to provide uh, the uh, support to Ukraine that they need to be able to launch uh, uh, new uh, counteroffensives and to liberate uh, more land. We also work with our mm. partners outside uh, uh, NATO. We met with uh, South Korea today. I went there some weeks ago. Uh, and for instance, South Korea is a NATO partner that is ramping up production, delivering more ammunition to NATO allies so mm. we can replenish our stocks and then uh, also be able to provide more support to Ukraine. I have to ask you, China's leaders visited Moscow, of course, last month. Uh, it has been told reportedly by, uh, by NATO members that there would be, and I quote here, consequences if China or Beijing supplies lethal aid to Moscow. Do you have any evidence that that is the intention? And what sort of consequences are we speaking about here if indeed China did provide that lethal aid to we uh, are not able to uh, confirm that uh, China has delivered lethal uh, aid or uh, weapons to uh, Russia. 
uh, but we are monitoring very closely what China uh, does, uh, because what we uh, do know is that uh, China and Russia are working more and more closely together, also in the military domain. They have joint uh, naval uh, uh, air patrols, big military exercises uh, together. Uh, China and, uh, and Russia signed a joint declaration just weeks before the invasion last year, where they stated clearly that their partnership is without any limits, no limits. Uh, and then, we, of course, mm. we also know that China has not condemned the illegal uh, 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 invasion of uh, Ukraine by President Putin and, uh, and, uh, and Russia. And therefore, uh, allies, uh, not least uh, our biggest ally, the United States, uh, have made it clear that if uh, uh, China uh, was to provide lethal aid to mm. um, Russia, there will be profound consequences.